In this video, we are going to show a convergence theorem for functions in L2i, complex valued. And in the next video, we are going to use this convergence theorem to prove the all famous Ries Fisher theorem, which states that the space L2i is actually complete. The Ries Fisher theorem is sort of indispensable in the study of Fourier analysis. So, this is sort of a very, very major theorem, which is a consequence of the theory we have developed. So, let's state and prove this convergence theorem. This is sort of like an analog of the dominated convergence theorem that we have seen for the space L of i. So, the setup is as follows. Let gn from i to c be functions in L2 of i. Assume that, assume that summation n equals 1 to infinity norm gn is equal to m less than infinity. So, this is sort of called normally convergent. Okay, uh, actually uh, the reason why it's called normally convergent is sort of stupid. The sum of the norms converges. So, uh, it's sort of called normally convergent. Then the series, series summation n equals 1 to infinity gn converges almost everywhere on i to a function to a function g that is there in L2 of i. Furthermore, furthermore, the norm of this function g is going to be equal to limit n going to infinity of norm summation k equals 1 to n g k and which is of course less than or equal to summation k equals 1 from uh, to n norm g k. Okay. The last part is just the triangle inequality. Triangle inequality. Okay. So, what this theorem is trying to say is that the moment the sequence or rather the series of norms of a sequence of functions converges, then the series itself converges almost everywhere to a function in L2i and moreover the norm of the limit function is nothing but the limit of the sums, uh, the norm of the uh, finite partial sums. Of course, I must mention so that there is no confusion, the norm here is the norm is the norm coming from the inner product coming from inner product in particular this is not the soup norm or anything don't make that mistake this is the norm coming from the inner product that we defined for complex valued functions in l2i last time okay excellent so let's prove this proof so um what does the triangle inequality say? Well, the triangle inequality says that summation k equal to 1 to n mod g k, the norm of this is less than or equal to summation k equals 1 to n norm g k. Okay. And this will be less than or equal to m. So, this is just triangle inequality and a hypothesis. and hypothesis. Okay. Now, expanding out the left hand side, what is this? This is just uh, integral summation k equals 1 to n mod g k the whole squared the power half. This is what that left hand side is by definition. And what this is trying to say is that this is less than or equal to summation uh, k equals 1 to n norm g k which is less than or equal to m. Okay. So, squaring what we get is integral over i summation k equals 1 to n mod g k squared 
this is less than or equal to m square. Okay. Now, what you do is define, define this new sequence of functions f and x to be the finite partial sums of the absolute values of the functions g case. So, you define fn of x to be summation k equals 1 to n mod g k x the whole square. Okay. Now, what can we conclude? First of all, it's obvious that fn is an increasing sequence fn is an increasing sequence of functions on i furthermore observe that observe that each mod gk is in l2 of i therefore this summation k equals 1 to n mod gk this is also in l2 of i which just means that summation k equals 1 to n mod g k the whole squared is in L of i. This is just a translating the definitions. Okay. What does that tell us? It tells us that f n is an element of L of i. Furthermore, the equation that we have here that the integral of the sum of mod g k squared per half is less than or equal to m or in other words integral summation k equal to 1 to n mod g k squared less than or equal to m squared this just becomes this just becomes uh, integral over i f n is also less than or equal to m squared. So what do we have? We have f n increasing we have f n increasing and we have integral i f n this set of all the integral values is bounded above. Note that these are all real numbers. These are all real numbers because we got rid of the complex valued nature of the functions g k by going to the absolute value. Excellent. So, by the by Levy's monotone convergence theorem f n must converge almost everywhere on i to a function f from i to r. Okay. Excellent. Now we have got a limit function. Furthermore, the monotone convergence theorem also says something about the integral values. Integral of i f is a limit n going to infinity integral of i fn which is going to be less than or equal to m squared. This is also another consequence of the monotone convergence theorem. So what have we concluded? We have concluded that this sequence of functions fn of x equal to summation k equals 1 to infinity mod uh, sorry k equals 1 to n mod gk squared uh, sorry mod gk the whole squared converges almost everywhere okay which means which means that the series without the absolute value also converges which means summation k equals 1 to n uh, g k converges converges almost everywhere on i right you can see this immediately by just taking square roots on both sides and observing that uh, that that uh, when you take square roots also you have convergence and therefore you have that the series of absolute values converge which means that the series itself should converge almost everywhere on i okay so you just define g g of x to be limit n uh, going to infinity summation k equals 1 to infinity g k of x uh, wherever the series converges wherever the series converges okay and you can just set g to be 0 otherwise it really doesn't matter what value you set on the points of a set of measures 0 okay now define define capital Gn of x to be 
the absolute value k equals 1 to n of gk of x the whole square. Okay, so again by what we have established we know that gn of x converges to g of x modulus squared almost everywhere on i. This is because the sequence inside the sorry the series inside converges to g of x almost everywhere. So gn of x converges to mod g of x squared almost everywhere. Okay, we also have the following relationships gn of x is less than or equal to fn of x. This is just the triangle inequality again. This is uh, absolute value of sum and this will be less than or equal to sum of the absolute values. Okay, And remember that fn was defined to be the sum of the absolute value squared. Okay, so gn of x will be less than or equal to fn of x and since fn increase to f this will be less than or equal to f of x and all this will be true almost everywhere on i. Okay, So we have got this sequence of functions which are real valued again remember g and x are real valued the reason why we took absolute values is to make sure you end up with real valued stuff so that we can apply all the dominated convergence theorem and etc which we have shown only for real valued functions. Okay, So by Lebesgue's Lebex dominated convergence theorem dominated convergence theorem g and x um, or rather the limit of g and x which is mod g of x squared this function is going to be mod g squared is going to be in L of i and furthermore the integral of mod g squared is just going to be the limit n going to infinity of integral of i g n. So this follows from dominated convergence theorem. Okay. Now what is integral of i g n? By definition it is just integral of i summation g k mod squared k equals 1 to n. This is just by the definition and this is by definition the norm of summation k equals 1 to n g k square. Okay? And we also have integral of i g n is less than or equal to integral of i f n less than or equal to m square. This just follows from the monotonicity properties or rather the behavior of the Lebesgue integrals under ordering. So what can we conclude from the fact that integral of i mod g squared is limit n going to infinity integral of i g n we conclude we conclude that that norm g squared is just limit n going to infinity of norm summation k equal to 1 to n g k squared which is less than or equal to m squared okay and this finishes the proof. This finishes the proof. Okay, excellent. So now we have got a sort of convergence theorem for series of functions in L2i complex valued. We are going to use this in the next video to prove the Reese Fisher theorem that says that L2i is actually complete. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on convergence in L2 of i.